Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A warm welcome to our Pentecost service. Whenever and wherever you are watching, we are joined with one another through the power and love of God's Spirit. Our reading today, the story of Pentecost, recalls the fresh outpouring of God's Spirit on Jesus' followers, like a wind and like flames of fire. This wasn't the first coming of the Holy Spirit. God the Trinity has always been at work everywhere. Nor was it the birthday of the church, as it's sometimes called. God has had a church as long as he has had faithful believers. The arrival of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost was to give new ways to Jesus' followers for their ministry at that time, equipping them to share the good news all around the known world. Just so today, we pray for God's new guidance as we imagine what the world and the church will be like after the ending of this health emergency. And so, with those thoughts in mind, Lord, as we wait in silence, fill us with your Spirit. As we listen to your Word, fill us with your Spirit. As we worship you in majesty, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your refreshing, fill us with your spirit. And as we wait for your equipping, fill us with your spirit. In God's presence, our sins, faults and flaws are burned away like impurities in fire. And so we call to mind our sins and we ask God for forgiveness. Lord, we have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone, and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. So may the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. God, who at this time taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, Grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort, through the merits of, your, of Jesus Christ our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We're going to now hear the story of Pentecost read for us by Grant Klein, then a sermon from Charles, and prayers led by Anita. During the prayers, I'm delighted that we're going to see some pictures from members of the Children's Church. They've been imagining the Holy Spirit, thinking what God's Spirit is like for them. Some real creativity and energy gone into those. So thank you to Children's Church for that. To lead us, to lead us into this, we're going to hear some children singing, Wonderfully collated, as usual, by Director of Music, Colin Hamley. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give thanks to the risen Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give praise to his name. Come, let us praise all the
morning's reading comes from Acts chapter 2, starting at the first verse. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we, are, we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds and power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my soul upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Tell your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. So begins the book of Joel, one of the so-called minor prophets which appear at the end of the Old Testament. In Joel, the people have experienced a crisis that's so great that nothing like it has ever happened in anyone's memory. A plague of locusts has destroyed crops and jeopardised food supplies. But just as important, the people have experienced a release so memorable from that very same crisis that Joel wants his hearers to pass the story on generation after generation. God hears the prayers of his people. Full harvests have been promised. Those who call on the Lord's name will be rescued. I wonder, what would you tell to generations to come of the events of recent weeks? And what would you in turn want them to pass on? Will it be things like practicalities? Shopping, whether for ourselves or for others. Or might we remember how communities wonderfully came together in all kinds of ways to support those around them? And we might reflect on the emotional and psychological impact, having our customary freedoms curtailed, longing to embrace loved ones, especially in times of illness or grief, frustration at all sorts of things, technology, the unknowing, the uncertainty. Whatever it is, I believe that God is standing alongside us now and hears us, whether through prayers of exasperation or of joy. During the crisis in Joel, 
The prophet tells of how the community deepened its spiritual awareness through prayer and fasting, very common responses at the time. But at the beginning of May, Tear Fund released details of its own survey into the spiritual life of the UK during this time of pandemic. And it's surprising. Nearly half of adults say they pray. And of those who do pray, over half agree that prayer makes a difference. But then two particularly unexpected points. A quarter of adults say they've watched or listened to a religious service since lockdown. And most encouragingly of all, a third of all adults between 18 and 34. Secondly, men are more significantly likely than women to have watched or listened to a service since lockdown. And neither of these findings reflects pre-pandemic trends. But we know ourselves that our parish YouTube channel has connected with new homes to a greater extent than we would have imagined. This is huge stuff. No one is claiming all this new interest will be the answer to the church's problems. And of course, much more work will be needed to understand the detail. But nor can we dismiss it. Like Christians up and down the country, we ourselves have been praying in our parish prayer for growth. And whilst recently we've heard lots about suppressing growth from epidemiologists, this upturn in faith interest is one curve I absolutely don't want to see flattened. So as we gather our collective memories at this time, will we remember to tell to generations to come about prayer, faith, what God has been up to as well? Today we're celebrating Pentecost and the coming of the Holy Spirit. So why talk of Joel? Well, one reason is because it's his words that Peter quotes in our reading we just heard from Acts. But Peter does so because of the PS, the part two, if you like, to Joel's story. For Joel, deliverance from a crisis was one thing, but there would be something more glorious still. And that's the coming of the Holy Spirit. Not just for a chosen few, but for everyone. Sons and daughters, young and old, slave as well as free. And with the Holy Spirit comes opportunity. Just as we saw the spirit of creation at the beginning of Genesis, or the spirit of freedom as God blew a path through the Red Sea for the escaping Israelites. So in those words of Joel's that Peter quotes, we hear the language of seeing visions and dreaming dreams. There's lots of talk now about what things might look like after lockdown. So seize it. The current situation will have shaped us all in different ways, and things can't be exactly as they were before. We need to dream big. Whether what inspires us is having clearer roads, being more aware of birdsong, rejoicing in closer neighbourliness, and in a church that is growing. Pentecost is all about renewing and refreshing, equipping and empowering. The Reverend Sam Wells said recently that we'll never get a better chance to make a future bigger than the past. So now, what stories do we really want to be telling to generations to come? Amen. Oh.
Dear Lord, we give thanks for the joy of worshipping together during these difficult times. To have these services each week to participate in brings us all closer to God and in many ways closer to each other. The familiarity of seeing Kenneth, Charles and John talking to us and sharing communion with us is a great comfort. Lord, we thank you for all work that goes into preparing these services and the wonderful music. May it not be too long before we can be reunited in our precious St Michael's and St Mary's churches. Thank you, Lord, for our community of St Michael's and St Mary's and for the other communities to which we belong. Thank you for neighbours and the roads we live in and thank you for showing us how in times of hardship people have so many good qualities and we give thanks for the acts of kindness shown to us by others. Help us to be thoughtful and to recognise when others are struggling with loneliness, fear or when they just need a friendly smile or word. Today we celebrate Pentecost, when all the disciples were given the power of the Holy Spirit. They were given the ability to talk to people in many different languages. Lord, give us the courage to speak to others. Show us when the time is right to talk to others about our faith and about you. We pray for those people who have found themselves praying in recent weeks for the very first time. May the Holy Spirit meet with them and enter the lives of all who are coming to know you. Bless them and guide them, Lord, as they start out on their new journey of faith. Lord, as this crisis continues, we pray for all those who are worried about their jobs and livelihoods. We pray for those who are facing redundancy and who know that the recession we are now in will cause them and their families hardship and financial worries. Help them to know that you are near to them and that nothing remains the same forever. Lord, we pray for all those who are ill. We pray for friends and family known to us who are mentally or physically unwell. We pray for healing for them and we pray for all doctors and nurses who are so amazing during this coronavirus pandemic and at all other times. Bless all those, Lord, who have died and give comfort to all their families and friends in their sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, Receive our prayers. Amen.
says that the fruit of God's Spirit is love and joy and peace. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It's our duty and our joy. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. This day we give you thanks because in fulfilment of your promise, you pour out your Spirit upon us filling us with your gifts and leading us into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith. Your Spirit gives us grace to call you Father, to proclaim your gospel to all nations, and to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore we join our voices with angels and archangels, and with all those in whom the Spirit dwells, to proclaim the glory of your name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it. In remembrance of me. So Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. So, Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to the feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. With all united to God, in the power of his Spirit, we pray the words that Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Body of Christ, bread of life. the cup of salvation. And so we give thanks. Author of life divine, in the resurrection of your Son, you set before us the mystery of his triumph over sin and death. May all who are washed in the waters of rebirth rise to newness of life and find the promised presence of your abundant grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. No Church of England service would be complete without some notices, uh, so let me firstly say a huge thank you to everyone involved in this act of worship. Uh, secondly, um, I've also heard in various forms um, how people are really keen to get back into church buildings, either St Michael's and St Mary's, or your lo local churches if you live further afield. Of course, God hears us wherever we pray. But I do share something of this frustration. The timetable, as set by the government, and assuming that there is no further slippage, is that we will see changes in early July. I'm mindful that not everybody is going to be able to regather at this stage, however, so we are actively looking at our options. We will be asking for your help with this uh, planning and preparation uh, through a questionnaire that we're going to be issuing in the next week or two. The uh, more replies that we get, the better sense we'll have of people's intentions and needs. So when that questionnaire comes out, do please help us by filling it in. That'll be going out on my email. Um, if you're watching this and don't subscribe to my email and would like that, please get in touch on kennethpadley at gmail.com. In the meantime, this uh, window of closed churches is allowing us to do some work here in St Michael's that would have shut the church anyway at the end of April. We're stripping back some plaster um, to allow the walls to dry out before some refurbishment works in a year or two's time. If you are among those who are keen to get back into St Michael's but can't yet do so, then do go to the YouTube channel where you can see the first episode in the online tour of this church, which went out last week. Uh, more of those will be coming in due course. So whether digitally or in person, I look forward to meeting again soon. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us today and always. Amen. We go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.